If everybody could please take their seats. All right, good morning. I'd like to welcome you today as we honor one of Simi Valley's most valuable citizens, Patricia Pat Havens. My name is Erin Hooper. I'm the granddaughter of Velma Clinton. My grandma and Pat were close friends dating back to the 60s. Pat was a huge part of my grandma's life as they shared endless memories watching Simi grow up around them one being a teacher, one being a nurse. It was embedded in me from the beginning the proper way to pronounce Simi Valley. If I didn't get it right, then I would quickly be um, corrected and scolded. You must pronounce it as Simi. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put my teacher hat on and I want everybody to pronounce it after me. Simi. All right. <laughs> I am grateful to have been exposed to so much of Simi Valley's rich history and feel blessed to have been taught from a young age how important it is to preserve it. Pat Haven spent an incredible portion of her life doing just that. Our host today and the caretaker of this beautiful park is the Rancho Simi Recreation Park District. I'd like to introduce the members of the park district board of directors who are here with us this morning. Vice Chair Elaine Freeman, Director Kate O'Brien. We are happy to have with us this morning representatives from our local government. From the city of Simi Valley, I'd like to welcome Mayor Pro Tem Mike Judge. Council Member Dee Dee Cavano. Council Member Elaine Lister. From the Simi Valley Unified School District Superintendent, Dr. Hani Youssef. From the Chamber of Commerce, President and CEO, Kathy Van Etten. Our distinguished guests in the audience include Mike Port, Community Liaison to Supervisor Janice Parvin. We are also grateful to have several members from the Strathern family here with us today, as well as many Pioneer families. Will these families please rise and be recognized? Thank you for joining us today. I invite Russ Havens, Pat's son, to come up and speak. Russ, will you join me? Good morning. Good morning, and thanks so much for everyone to uh, come out in this beautiful day and, and not only honor my mom, but uh, uh, the Strathern family as well afterwards. So again, thank you. Um, I've been asked to share a bit about my mom's upbringing uh, up through her the beginning of her career as, a, as an educator, as a teacher. And I could sit here and just recite all the various places she lived uh, because that's part of the story. And I'll go through a little bit of it, but really I think what I want to get across is how this, the timing of, her, of the era she was born and the uh, various places and circumstances she lived in really made her what she became and still is today because we may be calling this a retirement party, but let's not kid ourselves. She's not ever really retiring. <laughs> She's still working hard uh, uh, with colleagues on a fourth book, which will be out soon. So this is not really a retirement party, but more good job so far, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so as I was saying, though, she was born in 1930 in uh, northwestern Arkansas, very close to where Walmart is based in Bentonville County. And um, she was born in, in 1930, as was my dad, which obviously is primetime uh, depression. And both families grew up without, they were, neither side was ever poor, but no one was rich. And everybody made do with what they had on hand. If it broke, they fixed it. Uh, my mom was telling me this week that there wasn't that much use of currency even. It was a lot of it was just, you know, I assume bartering hay for chickens or you know, beans or what have you. But all of that get it done attitude and the DIY work that really is behind what my mom said, what mom did, 
is that she she just wouldn't take no for an answer, and she wouldn't accept inaccurate uh, uh, history facts to, to lay and go on. So she made this her passion project over the last 50 years, and it's turned into all of this. So I'm thrilled to report it. Um, Mom was a graduate of Simi Valley High School. How many kids in your graduating class? Wait a minute. Did somebody say Simi? Simi? <laughs> what year did you graduate? 1947? And how many in your class? 20 kids in the graduating class of Simi High School in 1947. Remarkable. And she was a class president. And then right after she graduated, she went to uh, Whittier College uh, and was the first person in her family to go through and graduate from, from college. And then uh, straight into a, a long teaching career with Simi Valley Unified School District. I know she taught right there at the same elementary school that my sisters and I went to at Simi Elm. And um, it was just a wonderful way for kids to grow up. And we got to learn a lot about activism and about standing up for what you think is right and getting things right. and. All those things have made my, what my sisters and I are now, it's all because of my mom. And my mom are, uh, just set a great example for all of us to work hard, do your part, and don't be lazy. And mom, thank you. So uh, especially proud of you. And again, thanks for everyone being here. And I think if the Oscar music doesn't start playing me off, it's soon will. So uh, Aaron, don't play the music. Anyway, thank you very much. I'd also like to write, whoa, I would also like to recognize that Bob Huber is in attendance today with his son as well. He was our past mayor. I'd like to introduce you to my boss, Dr. Hani Youssef, the superintendent of Simi Valley Unified School District. Hani, will you come up and say a few words? <laughs> they want to just lower that a tiny bit of feedback right there. Do you want me to do that? I don't know. I think it's math. I don't think it works. <laughs> No problem. Some multiple hats as an educator, DJ too. It can all happen. Um, thank you, Russ. As you stated, today is a beautiful day, and we're here to celebrate a beautiful woman, a beautiful human being, beautiful heart, beautiful soul has, that has done so much for Sami Valley. So I'd like to actually share some stories and a little bit of a background and some history and uh, add to what uh, Russ has already shared. Pat Havens was in the third grade when her family moved to California in 1937. She had left a one-room schoolhouse in Arkansas and began attending modern progressive schools on the west side of Ventura County. In 1943, Pat's family moved to Simi Valley and became a freshman, and she became a freshman at Simi Valley High School. She remembers those years fondly. As she describes, this community had many happy and healthy activities for all ages, and everyone knew each other. The annual Pioneer Day gave everyone a reason to dress in costume. Anybody remember that annual Pioneer Day? Yeah, okay, there you go. Sounds about right, everybody dressed in costume, okay. There was a rodeo and ball games. Our school had some pretty good teams and memorable athletes. There was only one tennis court that doubled as the basketball court as well. The very tall Doug Strather lived close by, and he excelled at basketball. It also helped that he knew where all the cracks were in the cement. <laughs> when I got acquainted with the kids, I soon realized that we had several members of Pioneer families in our class. Not only Doug Strather, but Don Wells from the Talley family, Neil Havens, and Charlie Taylor from the Hay family. Robert E. Harrington was invited to speak to the class, and I soon heard about colony houses at Simi Colony. After graduating in 1947, Pat attended Whittier College. She majored in history and minored in education. 
at that time, she said, a student could not major in education the most intended to teach. Whittier was a Quaker city, and so was the college. She graduated with a teaching credential in 1951 and married Neil Havens and signed on to teach at Sumi Elementary School, where she had a four, five, fourth and fifth grade combo class. Her annual salary was $3,200. Not much more than it is now. I mean, you know? We're making progress though. We're making progress. I never taught a class that I did not start with Sumi history. I had two students from the Gillibrand family, Kay Runkle, Bill Benz, and many others. That year, a Gillibrand wagon and a Runkle mule team were kind enough to give us a ride down to the creek where we had a weenie roast. Part of that rodeo thing, I think, right? All the good times in Sumi history. Kay Runkle and Leland Gillibrand have remained in close touch with me to this day. Other names have cropped up as the years rolled by. That was a great first year. Sami Elementary School was growing. The next year, Pat and Stan Taylor became two eighth grade teachers. Together, they taught all subjects except homemaking and shop. Students walked two blocks to Sami Valley High School to take those classes. After three years of teaching eighth grade, Pat was hired to teach the migratory class during walnut season. The class was held in the former brick Santa Susana School Building on Los Angeles Avenue. This was the new method of handling migratory students following the many years of segregation of the Mexican students at Sami Elementary School. Principal Leighton R. Stewart ended that practice when he came to Sumi in 1943. The population boom began around 1960. Sumi's lifelong farmers faced the growing lack of water and paying the high price for imported water was out of the question. Developers were able to buy up Sumi's independent acreages, build very affordable homes, and a flood of new residents and their children required instant attention. This was before the city's incorporation and there was not much oversight from the county. The school board and district did a commendable job of dealing with the fast growth. As many as two or three new schools were built each year. Pat worked as a substitute teacher. One year, she was a substitute for a fifth grade class at Sumi Elementary. She had 52 students in her class. Okay, that's impressive. That is very impressive. Along with everything else you've done, that actually is very impressive. So, When Walnut Grove School opened, Pat took about half the class with her. Then another section of the housing development was open, and almost overnight, her class grew to 52 students again. Pat said, in her ultimate teaching experience, it was her 30 years of teaching the history of Simi Valley, beginning in 1975 at the adult school. The class enabled her to record interviews, excuse me, rephrase, the class enabled her to record interviews with most of the pioneer families. As she states, we learn directly from the memories and experiences of those who lived the life of Simi Valley from its agricultural beginnings. And with that, we thank you, Pat, for your many, many contributions that are still ongoing, as Russ uh, told us. So thank you for everything. Thank you very much, Dr. Youssef. Now please welcome Jody Pepio, or Judy, sorry, Judy Pepio. Judy is with the Simi Valley Historical Society and has been an active board member since 2004. Judy, will you come up and say a few words?
Good morning. It is still. <laughs> well, I was very pleased to have the opportunity to uh, talk about someone who is known by all of you and many, many others not here to be the foremost expert on the history of Simi Valley. And very few cities ha are as fortunate as Simi Valley is to have a historical park such as this to preserve its local history. I'm talking about the park picking up from her middle time. Once, once she quit teaching, she started looking for someplace else to go to do bigger, better things. I'm going to stick to the script because you can see by everybody else's stories that we can go on and on and on and we'd still be here tomorrow. In 1964, she and others decided that there was a need for the creation of a group to preserve the history of the area. Thus, the Simi Valley Historical Society was formed. Her love and passion of history inspired her to serve as one of the founding members of the Simi Valley Historical Society. This small group met to discuss the possibility of collecting and preserving historical items and exploring the early families but the more they got into the history of the area, the more they realized how deep our heritage was founded in the Indian and Spanish eras. For four years, the new group held meetings and collected material. In 1968, the Historical Society was given permission to use the Mee Valley's first library, which was then located on 3rd Street, to use it as a museum. As most of you know, that little library building is the one you see behind me and was moved here in 1970. But the library was small and soon bursting at the seams with historical memorabilia from the area. In 1969, the six acres of Strathern Ranch was donated to the city of Simi Valley and the Historical Society was given the responsibility of developing the museum. It was to be jointly administered by the Park District and the Historical Society. That's still the case today. Pat was instrumental in the creation of Strathern Historical Park and Museum, which was dedicated in 1971 and now houses two National Register landmarks and provides a venue for historic events, docent tours, educational school programs, exhibits, and artifacts. In the early years when the organization was young, some scoffed at their unsophisticated attempts at forming a historical society. For a time, they were laughingly referred to as the hysterical society. Pat would admit the group was inexperienced, but they did what they had to be done at the time when valuable remnants of our past could have easily been lost forever. The first 15 years were difficult for the new organization. Community support was minimal. But the struggling group was able to maintain a membership of about 100. Seeing that the Historical Society was having a hard time, help arrived from George Sostrom, a member of the Rancho Simi Recreation and Parks Board, who stepped forward and offered his business expertise. He helped the Historical Society raise awareness in the community. That's still a problem. Membership increased to about 400 after the surge and well-attended barn dances were held to raise needed funds for exhibits and displays. In 1975, Pat taught her first class at the Simi Valley History through, excuse me, on the Simi Valley History through the Simi, Simi Valley Adult School, the tongue twister. And at the end of the first semester, she gleaned her first docents for the park. She taught this class, has already been mentioned, for 30 years. Also in 1975, she was appointed to the Ventura County Cultural Heritage Board. There she is instrumental in preserving the rich cultural history of this community for generations to come. Under her guidance, historic buildings, antique tools, housewares, farm equipment, written records, photographs, and more have been saved for posterity. In 1998, the Simi Valley Historical Society and Museum received the Governor's Historic Preservation Award. This prestigious award is the only official preservation award presented by the state of California. And it goes to worthy recipients in recognition of outstanding achievements in the field 
of historic preservation. This was in large part due to past efforts to promote the city's culture and researching its past. Pat was interviewed, Pat has interviewed, taped, recorded, videotaped more than 130 members of Pioneer family members and talked about a wide variety of topics. Pat has represented our city well through her work with the Simi Valley Historical Society, Cultural Heritage Board, and Associated Historical Societies and Museums in the county. She has actually educated our leader, Mr. Huber. <laughs> here and there. I believe Bob was the one that uh, got her named to the city historian. She has educated many of the leaders of history, but also through the leadership of Simi Valley, which is a program sponsored by our Chamber of Commerce. Her roots, dedication, and devotion, along with her heart, are firmly planted in the Simi Valley soil. While researching to speak today, I came across an article written over 18 years ago when Pat retired from teaching the classes at the adult school. The vice president of the historical society at the time was me. And I remember saying, she's really a rock of Gibraltar. She does not live in the past. She learns from the past. And she knows that growth and change are going to take place. I still believe that today. Thank you, Pat, for taking us all on a journey through time. I did, I did, I did stay on script. However, I have to go off of it for just one moment and do something I know Pat would do. In case you're not a current member of the Thank you, Ms. Pepio. I'd like to now invite Elaine Freeman, the Vice Chair of the Rancho City Recreation and Park District Board of Directors, to the podium. Elaine, will you join me? Yes, Good morning, everyone, and thank you very, very much for coming out this morning. As a director on the Park District Board, I really, really appreciate you being here. And I know that Pat does too. And um, Kate O'Brien, a current board member, was recognized. But I would also like to go off script and recognize Mark Johnson, who served on our board for many, many, many years and helped create what we have today also. And so thank you, Mark, for being here. I'd like to start by saying that every now and then, a community is blessed with someone who cares deeply of the history and preservation of the community. Simi Valley has been lucky to have such a person in our community, someone who has been part of the community since grade school, has taught here and continued a long career of making sure we, we do not forget our community's humble beginnings. We are here today to honor Patricia Pat Haven for her lifelong dedication to preserving the history of Simi Valley and for her many years of service to Rancho Simi Recreation and Park District, the Simi Valley Historical Society, Simi Valley Unified School District, and the city of Simi. And I'll add the County of Ventura because she serves on the Cultural Heritage Board there. So she's been felt all over this county. 
Shortly after the Strathern family's donation of Strathern Park to the Park District back in 1969, Pat had a vision of acquiring, relocating, and preserving historic buildings here at Strathern Park. Her first acquisition was the Hague Colony, Hague Calley Colony House in 1970, with her most recent acquisition being the Friends Colony House in 2018. I think that's the last one, right? Yes. Today they stand side by side at the park as a testament to Pat's never ending devotion to historic preservation. Pat was also instrumental in the acquisition of the original Simi Valley Library Building, the Wood Ranch Barn, St. Rose of Lima Church, Banaga Barbershop, Wood Ranch Windmill, and the Courier Pitting Shed. Today, these structures also reside in Strather Park for the education and enjoyment of future generations. Pat originally became an employee of the Park District in 1977 and served as our museum director for 45 years until 2022. I purposely did not mention retirement, just like her son said, since we all know that Pat will never retire from her endeavors and pursuit of knowledge. In addition, Pat served as the Simi Valley representative on the County of Ventura Cultural Heritage Board from 1975 to 2018. And I believe the Board of Supervisors is going to recognize her on this Tuesday, May 22nd. In cooperation with the Simi Valley Historical Society, Pat authored the three books on the history of Simi entitled Simi Valley, A Journey Through Time, The Strather Leathers, and in 2021, she published her latest book on the Tapo, which is really great. In 20, 2002, Pat received the Park District's prestigious Board of Directors Award, the highest award given by the Park District, recognizing her outstanding achievements in historical preservation, education, and providing cultural resource services to the community since 1964. Let's see, you're about a house here, but <laughs> as a Park District board member and representative of the Park District's Historical Society subcommittee for many years, I have personally witnessed Pat's devotion towards our community. Without Pat, I can certainly say, many of the cultural resources and local history have been lost forever. And what a loss that would be for all of us here today and for future generations. On behalf of the Red Josemi Recreation and Park District, I would like to express my gratitude and appreciation and that of the board for all the years of service and dedication that Pat has provided to the Park District and to the community at large. Thank you, Pat, for years of service to your community. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Vice Chair Freeman. We are happy to have Simi Valley Council Member Didi Kavano here with us today. Didi, will you come up and say a few words? Thank you, Erin. That's the right height. Thank you. Erin was worried. She works with my daughter at Sinaloa, and they weren't sure if I was showing up and got Jeannie all upset, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but we got it straightened out. There. I can put that back. I'm very honored to be here. Um, oh, some of what I have to say is repetitive, but on a personal note, Mrs. Havens and I met each other in 1969. She doesn't remember, and I didn't either. But she was a teacher at Hollow Hill for that year, and my sister had you in fourth grade. And she said to tell you to this day, she remembers Huck Finn, Tom Sawyer, and Square Dancing. So she said to make sure you, I told you that. <laughs> Square Dancing at Hollow Hills. Um, Hollow Hills was first opened in 1969, and that was when we moved here to Simi Valley. So it was an exciting time to be there. So during the, I'm here to honor Pat as our city historian. 
So during the June 1st, 1981 City Council member, our former mayor and county supervisor, Bob Huber, um, who was serving as City Council at the time, recommended that Pat be named our city historian. And the motion passed unanimously. So the next meeting, because you know how we have to do things from one meeting to the next, the next meeting, the title of city historian was conferred on Pat Havens by unanimous vote on June 8, 1981. So at the time she was named city historian, uh, Pat had already lived in, the, in our city of Simi. I still say Simi, I'm sorry, it never got through. The city of Simi for 38 years and had a Bachelor of Arts in History. He taught um, a course on Simi Valley History at Simi Elementary School, which I wish it was still open, Dr. Yusuf. Can we fix that? Me too. <laughs> My daughter went to see me out, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and she also taught the class at Simi Valley Adult School, the history of Simi Valley, ensuring that the history of Simi Valley is continued and shared with the generations to come. She was a founder of our uh, Simi Valley Historical Society in 1963 and 64. When we acquired the building in 1968 for use as a museum, she became our director and curator, as was previously noted. Um, you brought up, oh, Pat also set up the Park Guides program um, to keep the park available to the public and brought the history of the founding families to life as we see the Strathairns here. So thank you very much. In 1981, you had already been serving for seven years as the appointed member of the County um, Cultural Heritage Board and served for many years afterwards. For all these reasons, Pat was named our city historian over 40 years ago. But for anyone who has lived in Simi Valley, we know her contributions didn't stop there. She's a fixture in the community and is synonymous with Simi Valley history. I then met Pat in 1996 when I joined the Rotary Club. I enjoyed being a member with him and our post office on Galena is named after him. Um, she's also written and partnered multiple books, which was uh, presented earlier, and tells us really how to say not see me valley, but sunny valley. If you say it wrong, she'll correct you, and I think everyone's already told you that. But we as a city are so grateful that she has celebrated both our 40th and 50th anniversaries with us. That's pretty good. And she shared stories and participated in panels to continue to share the history of Simi Valley. Pat has now lived in Simi Valley for 80 of her 93 years, but you're only 63, so I don't know if they figured that out wrong. And, and because of her tireless dedication to the, the history of Simi Valley and ensuring it is not forgotten, generations of residents have had the opportunity to visit, visit Strathern Park each year, read the letters of the Strathern family, and learn how we became a city and much more. So Pat, as a person, personally, and as part of the city council, we are forever in your debt for the history of Simi Valley. So thank you. Already here. <laughs> Hi everyone. It's so great to see everyone here today. I've been asked to say a few brief words about the books, which Pat has written over her years as museum director and city historian, and you've already heard a little bit about the books. Um, most of you are very familiar with this. Everyone probably has it. See me by the journey through time. And let me just stop and say the most thing about to me. So I'm going to slow down. Have you looking at me right now. I know I, better, I know I better do better. Okay. So we have Journey Through Time, which most of you have published in 1987. And it has become the definitive history book for Simi Valley. If anyone, if anyone has a question about Simi history, you can probably find it right here. Um, then we have a beautiful book. Um, this this beautiful book illustrates history through photos and letters gathered from the Strathern family. 
on the tapo are must be used. Which, um, this one I had the privilege of working with Kat on, and this illustrates the agricultural history of Simbel. And she's Valley, and I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be a great book. Um, my first thoughts are important because we do so much to preserve the history of Simi Valley, and that's certainly true. But then I want us to know about her books, what she wanted, what her thoughts were, just anything she wanted to um, when I asked her what the motivation was for writing Journey Through Time, Pat said, we had amassed so much information. Um, the last one in the night, this one for the weekend. He had access to all of the Apple Pro photos and the she completed them. Um, he never imagined that it would become 500 pages. And it was so heavy, he just drew. I am so pleased that in each field, believe in us that they agreed to cover their specialties. I think they saw it as an unusual opportunity as well. I am proud that our historical facts are holding up. So, yeah, I'm gonna put this one down here. There you go. The, about windows on, on scrap and letters, windows on the top. Pat said, the 360 letters, scrap and letters in our collection were just begging to be organized and transcribed. They give such an inside look at their family life and business affairs that we could not have had it any other way. And I'll tell you a fun fact about on the tapo. If you look through this book, every occurrence of the word semi has an accent over that last eye. <laughs> this Pat specifically said she wanted that way, and I think it was an attempt to subliminally condition all of you. <laughs> so it's true. Look through here, every occurrence of Semi is not seen yet. Semi. All right, fun fact. Um, this most recent book illustrates the agricultural past by um, on its most, excuse me, it illustrates Semi's agricultural past by focusing on its most successful agricultural development. Pat saw an opportunity to write this book because the Historical Society had inherited an entire office full of Tapo Mutual Water Company records. It took decades to get a, around to writing this one. And by, the time, by that time, the technology was so improved that we were able to use many photos and aerial views. So now residents can visualize what Simi Valley was like before they arrived when it was spotted, spotted with orange groves. So what is the most significant thing about these books, according to Pat? I can turn the page, I'll tell you. Yeah, and I'm, she's gonna hold on. Thank you. Um, Pat says, when Ventura County was separated from Santa Barbara County in 1873, El Rancho Semi was sort of sidelined, partly due to the railroad going to other areas first. It has taken a long time for people to acknowledge our history. I've written these books to certify Simi's own place in history. It did not just happen. So in other words, history does just happen. However, the preservation and documentation of history takes an enormous amount of time, energy, and focus. Thank you, Pat, for this incredible contribution to our community. Thank you so much, Ms. Valdez. I'd like to ask Mike Court to please join me at the podium. Mike is the community liaison representing Supervisor Janice Parvin. Mike. Thank you, Aaron. Can you hear me back there? Okay, great. Uh, Aaron, actually, I'm going to ask you to come back if you can hold this for me, please. You brought me a present? I brought you a present, absolutely. Um, First, I'm going to uh, avoid embarrassment, not even attempt to say the city's name, and just refer to it as our city. So it'll make things a lot easier for me. Uh, Pat, we want to, on behalf of Supervisor Parvin, we want to thank you for everything that you have done 
to or for our city. And um, as Elaine mentioned earlier, Elaine will be receiving a proclamation at this Tuesday's Board of Supervisors meeting, and it is open to anybody. So please if you get an opportunity, and I know it's a little far because you have to drive to the Ventura County building, but please, she would love to have as many people in the audience as possible. And if you can't make it, it will also be live on the Zoom, so you can check that out. But Pat, um, on behalf of Supervisor Parvin, she does want to congratulate you for everything that you've done for the city. She also has a certificate of recognition specifically regarding the Pat Haven Scholarship Program, which she's very excited to hear about. So on behalf of her, congratulations very much. And Erin, that's a gift also from Janice for Pat. All right, thank you so much. We would also like Mike Judge to come up to the podium. Well, thank you and hello. I'd also like to have my colleagues come up with me, Elaine Lister and uh, Edie Kavanaugh, please. Oh, Elaine left? Oh, I'm sorry. Elaine was here. She had to leave. She had her granddaughter with her. We're here today to celebrate a very remarkable woman in our community, and I've been calling it to me for the longest time. Uh, born and raised here in town. I love this place. I was part of the group that came here in the 60s, early 60s, and occupied all those homes that destroyed our beautiful farmland. <laughs> so, with that being said, I wanted to read our proclamation from the city for Pat. You have to bear with me. I'm not used to reading cursive. Whereas Patricia Havens has spent the better part of 86 years in Ventura County, with her tenure in Simi Valley beginning during her teen years when she built relationships with the community, community's pioneer families, her passion for local history sprouted. And whereas in 1964, Patricia Havens recognized the importance of the stories and living history she was witnessing and the need to capture for future, future generations. And because a founding member of Simi Valley, and became a founding member of the Simi Valley Historical Society. And whereas Patricia Havens has become synonymous with history of Simi Valley and has become an invaluable resource to its residents with her service as museum director at Stratham Historical Park and Museum. And, and the classes she taught on history of Simi Valley to students of the Simi Valley adult schools. And whereas Patricia Havens was named city's historian by the Simi Valley City Council in 1981, an honor that has not been bestowed on anyone since and has served the residents of Simi Valley on the Ventura County Cultural Heritage Board since 1975. And whereas, now Keith is here, he'd have to say something about all the whereas. <laughs> whereas the city of Simi Valley desires to express its deep gratitude and appreciation to Patricia Havens for her many contributions to preserve and share the history of Simi Valley with the people near and far. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council, the City of Simi Valley, and the Historical Society founding, that Historical Society founding member, City Historian, and Museum Director, Patricia Havens, has left an indelible mark on, on Simi Valley. Simi Valley. I'm trying not to get it wrong. And has brought History to life for generations of those residents presented on this day, the 20th day of May, 2023. Thank you very much, Pat, for all you've done for our city. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, Mike Judge, and Council Member Judy Cosmo. I'd like to ask Nell Ann Wilson to join me at the podium. Nell Ann is the current president of the Simi Valley Historical Society. Good afternoon. I'm Nell Ann Wilson, and I have the privilege of being the current president of the Simi <laughs> Historical Society. I'm going to say it right because you're too close to me. Okay. It is my honor to be here today as we celebrate Pat Haven and her incredible contribution to our community. 
Pat's life mission to research Sunnese Valley's rich history and record it for future generations, as well as educate anyone who is willing to take the time to learn. It is because of this dedication and passion that the Sunni Histori History Historical Society sorry, de decided the best way to honor Pat would be to continue her lifelong commitment to education. That is why today I am happy to announce the creation of Pat Haven's scholarship program. The scholarship board will consist of members from the Historical Society, the Park District, and the City of Sunny Valley. Could have stayed long, I'm sorry. Um, with this program, every year students from all over Simi Valley will have the opportunity to write essays for consideration. Those selected will win a financial scholarship in Pat Haven's name, contributing to the student's continued education. On behalf of the Sami Valley Historical Society, I want to say thank you, Pat, for all you have done. Your love to educate, to inspire, to help all of us, to the, uh, to help us all to the future, to the future while remembering the past. It's a big word to say. Yes. Okay, now through Pat Haven Scholarship Program, you will be able to do, do that for generations to come. Thank you, Pat. I would like to present you with the check, uh, starting at $2,000, and we'll be looking for some great young people. Thank you, Nellian. I am Elaine Freeman. This is a very special moment, and we'll see if we can get Pat over here. To celebrate Pat's many contributions to the community of Sine Valley today, we would like to unveil a plaque honoring Patricia Hayes Haven for, quote, a lifetime of service and dedication preserving the history of Sine Valley. <laughs> oh, Lane, do you want to take the mic and read the inscription, or do you have it?
service and dedication to preserving the history of Simi Valley. Mrs. Patricia Pat Haven was the founding member of the Simi Valley Historical Society and became wife, the museum director. In 1977, she served as museum director until 2022. Mrs. Havens was a teacher for the Simi Valley Unified School and taught a class called History of Simi Valley from 1974 to 20. Cultural Heritage Board from 1975 until 2018. Mrs. Haven was appointed city historian by the city of Simi Valley, city, uh, city council, excuse me, in 1981. Mrs. Haven published three historic history books titled Simi Valley and Journey Through Time in 1987, Simi Valley, The Strathern Letter, Windows on the Past in 2009, and on the Capo, Simi Valley's Finest Agricultural Development in 2020. Mrs. Havens has played an instrumental role in the development of the Robert P. Strathern Historical Park and Museum and was devoted to serving in that role for 45 years. We honor her for the immeasurable contributions she has made to our community and its history.